would like to talk a little bit about my bassoon. This is going to be the first of a two-part uh, video series uh, on actually my particular instrument here. It's a re really unusual instrument. This is a uh, bassoon made by Guntram Wolf. I got it in 2005, so I've had it uh, 11 years now. And it's unusual in a lot of different ways. I'd like to go over um, some of the keywords and some of the options I've had on it. Uh, first off, the vocal. This is a, a T10. The uh, T vocal series from Wolf is uh, a special alloy that he uses. Uh, the 10 means that this is exactly one millimeter thick. Aside from the wooden vocals, this is the thickest wall vocal you will find on the market. It's very heavy. It's about double the weight of a normal vocal. Normal vocal is about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 millimeters thick in the metal. This is nearly double the thickness in the walls. Um, next feature, you can probably see this pretty well, is I have a double high E, high F key. So I've got the standard high E flat right here in normal position. Then I've got high E again in normal position, but I've also got a second high E key that comes out right over the high E flat key. And in addition to that, there's a high F key on top of the E key. A little bit unusual design to it. It was added over several goes onto the instrument. I'll just play chromatically starting on high C up and you can see how those keys work. And that's right up to the high F and it pops out pretty easily. You can see I can switch between the two E fingerings between first finger and second finger. If I just need to go up to E, I'll probably just use first finger. If I need to go to the F, I'll use second finger and just. Pretty standard, pretty straightforward. The other uh, key you'll see here is a left hand pinky whisper key. And this is actually a really unusual mechanism for it. Uh, again, this was added after I got the bassoon by Wolf. It's activated normally just like the uh, the pink, left pinky key would be, but if, down here, he's they've added uh, a much more advanced mechanism. Uh, taking this key apart would actually be extremely difficult. It is all one piece. Uh, there are some bolts I can take off. There are washers in between here, so it's a completely silent mechanism. But in order to fully take off the, the whisper key, I've got to take off this piece and this piece because they are completely connected to one another and have this conjoining bar between them. Again, a, a useful feature, although it does lead to having some pretty big stretches in the left hand. In fact, the biggest stretch you could possibly have is completely uncomfortable. But luckily, you never have to do that. Uh, around on this side, I've got a high A bridge to the whisper key. This is actually a, a Fox a high A bridge I had put on by local technician. Um, and it does the job absolutely perfectly. It's got a roller mechanism on it, so it glides very smoothly. Only one roller here. It's on the, the whisper key itself and the left hand whisper key lock. I much prefer the left whisper lock over the right whisper lock. That way I can just hit it in use and I don't have to worry about moving my right thumb to get the whisper key. Aside from that, on the boot joint, I've got a custom hand rest. Uh, these are uh, the German shank hand rest, not the American shank, so none of my Fox hand rests will fit in here. Um, the actual hand rest mechanism is very different from the Fox mechanism. Instead of just the screw holding the hand rest in place, the screw holds against an inner bracket um, that pivots. And so the screw actually does not ever come in contact with the shaft of the handrest. 
And over here, just the one roller from the pancake key to the F sharp. And this is a completely, uh, I won't say completely, but nearly flat design here. The pancake key is actually concave. And it does not need any roller keys at all. And one additional roller here on the F sharp. That's actually a really handy one when you need to go between F and F sharp. And then over here, I've got the auxiliary uh, second E flat, uh, not E flat, uh, low C key. And this key right here, I, I use probably more than I use the regular low C. And it just makes the passages in the low register much easier, uh, particularly uh, something like B flat to C. Instead of hear how the, the B natural kind of pops out, but with that auxiliary low C key, I don't have to worry about the low B ever coming out. Now there is one other set of mechanisms on this bassoon, but I need to save that for a second video. So that will follow shortly.